This is Spencer with the MacGuffin, and today I'm joined by Jake Wilson and Sass Goldberg. Yes. Did it right that time? You got it right. Um, the so many different positions behind. You must be joking. Let's see. We got director, co-writers, co-stars, co-producers. Anything else that I'm missing? No, Probably, that's all our titles. Yeah, yeah. That's enough. Probably other stuff just to help out, just because you guys were doing so much. Yeah. But um, film is playing at SIF 2014. Uh, what would you describe it as? A story of a woman who reconnects with a childhood friend who uh, is unhappy in the position of her life and I, I don't know if it's reconnects or connects with a new passion along the way. Is that a fair assessment? I think that was totally accurate. Yeah, yeah. it's like he comes back in her life and pushes her to pursue something she never really had the balls to pursue before. Yeah, not a huge success story, kind of like a, a little slice of life, you know, kind of small success. It, it's, it's funny to think about, like, in terms of, like, modern times, like, the success in the movie is kind of like the most sort of accurate depiction of success in modern uh, media. But yeah. let's we'll, we'll get down that road in a little bit. Uh, I want to talk about how did this film sort of begin? What was the process? I know you guys are friends. We were best friends. We met in college. We met at the okay, University so of Michigan. not childhood friends. That is not carried yeah, is over not from true. anything. No, no. <laughs> what, if anything, is biographic to this movie, and what was the original inspiration, I guess? Sure. I um, well, the friendship is true. We didn't meet as children, but we met in uh, college freshman year. Ten years ago. So, oh, my Ooh. God. Gross. <laughs> um, and then... And then... Uh, you know, what is true about it is that she loves comedy, you know, so that's yeah. that's a true thing. We both love comedy. So we wanted to make this movie kind of a love letter to comedy. Um, originally, the, the original idea of the movie I had um, was about this girl who wanted to be on SNL, actually. So it was all going to be about, like, how she could get her tape to Lauren Michaels. And um, But we realized pretty quickly that we weren't going to be able to use Saturday Night Live, like, the words. We weren't going to be able to just shoot at 30 Rock. And I did not want to have to be like, I really want to be on Friday Night Live. Like, I hate that. I hate when people do that. So we were like, how can we tell this same story without having to do that? So I came to SAS and was like, I'm writing this movie for you to star in. Would you want to write it with me, actually? And so then once we kind of started doing it together, we pretty quickly realized, let's just make it about her wanting to be a comedian. That's a, it's an interesting thing. I mean, obviously, the sort of improv um, element sort of carries on over. Yeah. Is that something that's really of passion to you guys? And obviously, the, the next question would be, how much of this was actually improvised? I would say, as far as improv, I've always done improv. I did improv in high school. Then I was on an improv team all through college. So, And then I did improv when I graduated college as well in the city. So improv has always remained something that's hugely important to me. And... Uh, we have we feel like we have really talented friends and they all got to be in the movie or a lot of them got to be in the movie and we know how fabulous they are so a lot of the stuff you see is improv improvised like we do it once then jake would be like okay now let's just riff on it a little bit so a lot of the stuff that's ended up in there you know with a guy like hannibal you want to let him come up with some stuff on his yeah. own he's pretty good at that no you don't you don't want to be like hannibal hannibal, hannibal. Stick i got to the, I got to the page yeah. please <laughs> i got this come on hannibal come on Let's yeah. be real. No, they, that's a lot of the gems in the movie are things that came about within that shot in that moment, and it's not on the page. Yeah, but at the same time, you know, we only shot in 15 days, so it's not like we had all this extra time to really just be like, now let's do five more takes where we improv, you know, so we really needed to make sure we did get all the coverage at first, and then we would kind of, you know, or whenever we did the run through before we shot, you know, we would encourage improvising in there, and then whatever moments we found, we would keep. And then any of the footage from the improv class, like you, there's a lot of footage that goes back to the improv class. That is all real improv games happening on the spot. That's pretty funny. Yeah. Wow. 15 days. That's pretty remarkable, uh, especially <laughs> considering the number of people who are in the film, the number of locations that are in the film. What was that experience actually like doing it? And at what point were you like, I kind of regret this plan. Maybe we should have thought about this to a different way. I think, you know, Jake and I had never been in a feature film before. So there were things that we just didn't know. When we were writing it, we're like, and then there's going to be a crazy woman who comes up to her at the Starbucks. And we kept on making giraffe. Yeah, all these characters. And we didn't realize till we started interviewing line producers. They're like, do you guys realize that you have a micro budget and there are 52 speaking roles? Because, like, that's actually not a thing. And we're yeah. like, oh, but we're going to do it. So... That's what's going to happen. Yeah, like I had come from, you know, I did a web series for two years before this, you know, that was kind of 
what I did originally that kind of got me to realize that I want to be directing writing called The Batteries Down. And through that, we had, you know, no budget, no crew. Like, the extent of the crew was, like, you know, Sass holding a clamp light, like, you know, on me. So <laughs> the fact that we then did have a real budget and we had, like, a 40-person crew, it's like, you can't tell me that we can't do this. Like, because I've done it on nothing, so and now we have a budget, so, like, we're going to do it. So it kind of took the right line producer, not until we met our producer, Sarad Balducci. Oh, then amazing. it was really, like, she was the one who's like, let's do this. You know, a lot of people were like, you have to cut 20 pages, you have to cut 10 speaking roles we have to cut 10 locations it's like well we're not going to do that because you know that's not the movie we want to write so i think that that's what's really great about this as an indie film is that it doesn't look like an indie film you know a lot of indie films have three locations and four actors and this has the scope of a huge studio movie but it is an indie comedy so yeah i mean it's it's i guess logistically it makes sense to have yourselves in so many different roles but did that end up being a bit of a challenge? I mean, I know you guys can act, like there's no question about that, but just like at a certain point juggling so many different things. It I, just... I think a great way to explain that, Jake was saying this the other day, is one one of our most stressful scenes, which we were shooting um, at fly, Flywheel, we go to a spinning class, oh, yes, I don't want to give too I, much I away. That. Yeah, there's and... a Flywheel here in Seattle, yeah, a spinning yeah. studio. I wonder what it was for so long, you guys put so many <laughs> pieces go. together in my head. And we had about 40 extras in that scene, and we were in it, and we had a lunch break that was like 30 minutes, and we had to move locations because the sun was setting and we needed to get into Central Park. And the class and started blah, at blah, Flywheel blah. so like our time frame was very, you know, we could only be in Flywheel from like noon to five. And we had to eat. And I remember we were like scarfing down like a slice of pizza really quickly and someone came up to us, like our UPM or somebody said just so you guys know something's wrong with the checks and they're bouncing so you guys in this and break you need to be to chase by chase. five. And it was and like at this point like we hadn't thought to like make our accountant like a co-signer so like literally like, it has to be one of us to go to this oh, bank and it's like, God. oh don't worry about it I'm just, you know, directing a movie and starring in it like it was like that was the, the moment where I was like I, we can't do this again who gave us in charge of money like that's not our you know job even just like in terms of like different passions I mean you spoke about discovering that you want to be a director how does this all break down for you because I mean I know you guys are writing acting and directing this essentially is any one of those specifically a passion and you're just doing the others because it's a means hmm. to an end to That's the other ones? Question. Or, I mean, it, like, how does that all break down for you guys? Because there's so many different roles you have yeah. to handle. Yeah, that's really, it's actually a really great question. Um, you know, acting and performing has always been my first love, my first passion. It's what I really turns me on. But I will say I didn't realize how much I love writing until we started writing together. And there is something to be said about writing your own stuff and getting to perform it. That is so fulfilling that I've never been fulfilled in any capacity like this when I'm doing both at the same time. So even writing this movie has brought out that in me, realizing that perhaps it's not just performing somebody else's words. It's my own words. It's really fulfilling. Yeah, I had, you know, written a lot before writing this with Sass, and I think that writing was always some sort of a chore to me, you know, up until this point. And then it kind of was like, oh, my God, this is so much easier. You know, like now I love writing. Once you have somebody to be accountable with and bounce ideas off of and tell you that that's stupid, like it is really hard to offend either of us. Like there's pretty much nothing you can say that offends us. And <laughs> so like she could write something and I'm like, Sass, it's terrible. It's the worst joke ever. Like, like what are you doing? Something so else. Right. And she's like, okay, great. Next. You know, like we don't have any ego in terms of that. So, and I, you know, I definitely know that I wanted to be a director forever. And, you know, in terms of acting, like we said, if we would have just written the script and, you know, passed it off to a studio or something, we wouldn't have been these roles. We would, I wouldn't have gotten to direct this movie. So that's why we kind of, you know, we do love the idea of writing and creating things for ourselves. And now that we have done that, it's going to be really hard to go back and, you know, you know, I, I, it's going to be great to be in other people's things, but it's but it's also going to be a very much different experience. We also have to remember, you know, as a director, like that we had final, you know, I had final cut on this movie. That it's like that's not always going to happen. There's going to be so many cooks in the kitchen next time. Well, that's an interesting point you mentioned there. Like now you've had this experience. Like was it like going to be going to other people's things? So are you constantly giving like that's not how I would do it. <laughs> like that's not how I write the scene. This is not how I would <laughs> frame it. You know what what is that going to be like? I right? think the experience we had on you must be joking. The fact that there was really nobody on set that was like a higher up producer that was like all right guys do not need to do this it was literally jake and i they'd be like what do you guys want to do next and we'd be like um let's eat lunch like we were making it up as we go and we realized like that experience will never happen again and we're so lucky that i got to have it on our first time out of the gate yeah but i also feel like you know 
like working on other people's things, I feel like our lives are going to constantly take us this way. SAS could be doing this series. I could be directing another feature that somebody else wrote. You know, that is so appealing to me too, you know, or for me to go do a guest spot on something or whatever. But I think that in terms of writing, that's where we're always going to come back together. You know, I think we're always going to continue to write together. And then, you know, this is the dream situation where we get to write, star, direct, do it all. But, you know, it's going to probably be a few years in between these kind of projects. It might be kind of weird for me to state this, but actually some of my favorite stuff about the movie is not the comedy. I really like hmm. comedic actors going dramatic. And I think this film has definitely an element um, it's very relatable to a lot of people. The element of being unsatisfied with like your job, for instance. Like when you sign that like date on the calendar, you're like, I don't want to be out of here by here. Um, it really is very relatable. What was it like in terms of sort of creating that dramatic balance to the comedic? Because I mean, it could have very easily skewed in just to like almost a slapsticky type movie, but you do sort of keep reining it in as it goes. Along. I mean, I think the biggest thing for us was you had to care about Barb and you needed to care about her journey and you wanted good things for her. And I think that would be hard to do if there was never any weight to the situation or if there were ne never any stakes to her. So I think we needed those scenes where she, you know, where she got upset or where we saw the emotional side because then it's kind of like, who cares if it's all just funny the entire time? This was, it, it, is, it is a comedy, but this was serious for her. This was real. This was her life and she wanted something to come of it. So we had to show that, and because to show that, you need to show both sides, comedy and drama. And that makes the comedy so much funnier, too. You know, whenever you get to see the real, you know, the reality of the situation, that then two seconds later, there's a joke. That's how life is, you know? So, like, that's what we want to show. We love Nicole Holof Center films, films like that, where it's, you know, it's kind of always middle of the road. It is a comedy, but there's so much depth to it, too. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't have much interest in writing just a huge, you know... Hangover 7, that's that's not what we are. Um, so it's really great that we were able to have this kind of a story to tell. You say that now, but you put that in the universe, and now probably I know. we're going to get four hangover more Hangover seven. movies out of it. I know, exactly. We'll do Hangover 8, though. <laughs> that, that one's acceptable. Uh, what was it like working together on camera? I mean, that. I mean, obviously you talk about being off camera, writing this together, so being like, this joke sucks, blah, blah, blah. Right. What was it like sort of like actually cultivating that chemistry on camera? Because that is such a significant element of the film is your friendship and sort of like the ups and downs that go through that as it goes through the plot. I mean, that kind of comes naturally for us. You know what I mean? Like every, a lot of people who see the movie are like, your chemistry is so, you know, undeniable, whatever. But if you would see us at lunch at Lolo, where we just were right now, like it's the exact same Good thing. Restaurant. Love Lolo. This is our second time oh there God. already Lola for the go. trip. Um, great waitress too. She was <laughs> awesome. Um, but you know, that, that's just comes naturally to us. That's there. So like, I think that the one interesting thing about the on camera, what, uh, is when we weren't together is like, let's say we're doing a scene together. I knew as a director, I know her so well as an actress and as a friend. So if we're running late or we're doing something, whatever, like I know that we can do the last take with her and we can do one take, you know, whereas with me, I was, you know, I didn't realize we're on set the first day and like, I clearly didn't really learn my lines because I'm thinking of so many other things. So then we get there and I'm like, Oh, right. I have a, like, two paragraph monologue okay so the mind's gonna take a little bit more guys like bear with me so that was a little harder um a lot of times but again since we wrote it like you know it's pretty easy we we know the things inside and out so the stuff that was the two of us was like very less very takes you know in comparison to the other scenes in the movie jake would come to me at the very end and be like okay in this shot you need to hysterically cry and then you need to walk to the left and laugh over there and make it a really funny joke and i was like okay i can do it and i had one minute to do it and then the sun was going to set and we that was the only chance i got very spectacular. Um, <laughs> what was it like, sort of, what was, I guess I should frame this as, what was the greatest challenge in this movie? Because there's, I mean, you've talked about, you know, the complexity of, like, locations, complexity of handling everything yourselves, complexity in the number of actors. What was really the biggest challenge that you guys discovered as you're going through it and had to overcome? I mean, there's a few challenges, there's several challenges, but I think the biggest is this being our first experience. Every single thing was like a brand new stop sign or a brand new speed, like bump in the road that we had never experienced before. And we had to learn how to deal with it right then and there. It's not like we can go back to our other feature films and be like, oh, well, how we can deal with this is everything was in that moment. We were truly casting the film with our incredible casting directors, Shana Markowitz and Carrie Gardner while we were shooting like the family stuff was going to shoot on June 7th and it was June 5th and we still did not have a mom and, and a we were sister. in day for a production on a 12 hour day on set and we're in the scene and we're getting calls like should we you know can we pay for this or blah blah, blah can we do this and we're like ah yes you know like and we're like in between takes we're like we got Margaret Collin it's like mm -hmm. amazing <laughs> um, so that was really hard for us I think that was one of the biggest things 
what was the story behind the giraffe? Because I love that. It was a great omen. But like, at what point you're like, we're in a micro budget film. Fuck it, giraffe. You know, it's a great story actually. It's, it, you, def- a, w- did we didn't even go through our minds either of us that like Not that's going to be money. We we're just like, and originally it wasn't just a giraffe. It was like a peacock. It started with a, a peacock, bear. and then a bear, and then a giraffe. We had like, three it animals. Got like more crazy. And so I know <laughs> this guy Bill Berloni who trains all the animals on Broadway. So like you know like Elwood's little dog and like any you know <laughs> okay. animal that's in a Broadway show he does that so I reached out to him and I was like hey just question for you we have this movie and like you know we tried to get a bear and a giraffe I mean like crazy and he's like okay so he sends us a list he's like well you know what funny enough you say I have uh, there's a farm upstate New York about an hour away we've got XYZ he names us all the animal options they have like a baby giraffe he's like the only thing is because you know I told him what was involved I was like it's super simple like just you know from walking right to left and we thought then if we were going to lose use real animals that we would shoot them in front of a green screen and then you know green screen that or whatever like so many extra steps and he was like you know what I gotta be honest with you uh, here are all the animals but I don't think that the, the sloth can handle the walk and we're like oh okay, okay great so the sloth is gone like the sloth can't sloth walk from one menu. side oh, yeah okay. we were um, talking we couldn't believe this was like an actual con- like it was the funniest email chain I've ever seen we're like what about the lemur how's the lemur gonna do and we were just writing about all these animals and then finally when we saw how much it was gonna cost we're like okay A cut all the animals we need to keep one and like giraffes the funniest to us yeah. and the tallest and the biggest and then uh, it was just VFX like we we use special effects for that one yeah, that and how the idea great. came is we knew I don't want to give too much away of the film but we knew that Barb had to capture something that was huge that she wouldn't realize it was huge but we didn't want to make it serious like uh, something that's terrible or an awful event that was happening mm-hmm. so we still needed to have a little levity to it and humor to it and we came up with it literally sitting in my apartment and we're yeah. like yes animals I don't know how we came up with that I totally remember the moment <laughs> was it from the bathroom from the picture of the giraffe in your bathroom I came out of the bathroom and I was like animals we're gonna have animals walk by oh. and he was like yeah yeah we are <laughs> it, as I was mentioning earlier um YouTube ends up playing a role in the, the movie and you've spoken about doing web series and mm-hmm. stuff like that um what was sort of like the genesis of that idea? I mean, it's it, you sort of spoke about like having to capture something significant, but it, it is it is such a sort of a modern um, demonstration of like celebrity. Yeah, there's nothing more than like people becoming famous for <laughs> being on the web. What was like was that the idea behind that? What what was the sort of thought process behind that? Yeah, like she said, you know, the idea was kind of we didn't think that Barb was going to end up on Conan or on David Letterman. You know, it wasn't that she had this huge success, but it was that she took a step in the right direction. You know, she changed her life this much, you know, and that much makes such a difference. That's kind of the overwhelming idea of the film. So, you know, like you said, we do love this idea of everybody these days has their 15 minutes of fame, you know, especially with the way that you can just put anything online or, you know, mm-hmm. all, all this shit out there. And, uh, you know, bravo to YouTube for being so great for letting us use YouTube. You know, like I was saying earlier with Saturday Night Live, like we had the clearance from YouTube to yeah, do that's that. that's interesting. I didn't yeah. even think about that. And it yeah, didn't come true. through until after we wrapped. So we shot every single thing with a fake one, too, called like Videog that like, you know, we had our graphics person make in case we had to put that one in. And like, thank God YouTube came through. So. Yes. What was that process like? Because my experience when dealing with Google is it's fucking impossible to get a hold of them. Yeah. Like. Oh yeah, they were really hard to get a hold they of. They were. They were. They were not hard to get a hold of initially, but the like. You know, I kept being like, okay, so we're locking picture. Like, do we have approval here? You know, and they handled because we also have Billy Googling things. And, you know, there were a couple of things that they handled. There were like a lot of oh, Google yeah. and YouTube things throughout the whole thing. And so, uh, you know, eventually they needed the last step was like they wanted to see the video clips from each thing. And then eventually they just signed off on it. And like it was after we had already locked picture and we were just like, you know what? Yeah. They're not going to sue the us. Right. <laughs> like, hey, guys. I mean, your character, Sass, is definitely a relatable sort of position for a lot of people. But for you, Jake, like, your character is a little bit more, I don't know if challenging is the word, but, like, you had to ride a much tighter line in terms of, like, awesome friend, asshole. What was it like trying to balance that character as a sort of a, I don't know, sidekick? That doesn't even really seem No, totally. Sidekick. Um, Um, It's interesting. You know, when we were initially writing it, uh, that's just such a fun thing to play. It's so fun to play self-involved. And, you know, that was like really exciting to me to play that. And then actually, you know, in the first cut of the film, we found that he was an asshole. He was not a good friend at all. You know, there was too much asshole. So we kind of recut it and we changed some things and did a a few reshoots to kind of change it to make it the classic buddy comedy breakup, get back together thing. Because, um, 
you know, we realized that that was kind of what the heart of the film was about, just as much so as, as oh, it is Barb's yeah, journey. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so it was a super fun role to play. But yeah, it, it was a little hard to ride that line of, you know, is he a dick here or, you know, does he love her? But I think you see that, that he's kind of unhappy too. Well, it's, it's good too. And because uh, I come from a background of like, if I can't find a character relatable, like any character in a movie, like I just don't like it. For instance, like very bad things. Like, I don't know if you remember yeah. that film. Yeah. Uh, it's just like everyone's a dick in that movie and I just like I don't give a shit about any of your <laughs> right. stories. So like to have his story be one that you care about is is definitely one that you have to sort of pull him back from that precipice of being just a complete asshole and yeah. thankfully you guys do that. Exactly. Um, and I think that just how he changed her, she changes him for the better too. That's true. That that hopefully that pizza scene when they're eating pizza together is the first time they oh, yeah, yeah, lets yeah, his yeah, guard yeah. down a little bit and like Oh, that was, yeah, a, that was a great scene actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's so appropriate it's my modern dieting and all that sort right. of stuff to be like ah. Yeah, taking, he's like a ballet dancer. He takes you know. himself too seriously, and she's like, "Okay, have a be- bite of pizza." <laughs> and yeah, um, I want to talk quickly about the auditioning scene, yeah. just because my that's favorite scene in the movie. A lot so of people funny. are talking about that one. How 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 realistic does that capture the experience it's of auditioning? Very... Because it's just so over the top and hilarious. But it seems like this is probably actually what is. Exactly I mean, like. I've gone on many a commercial audition in my life. Um, and it is like that. And you usually, they usually explain the scenario to you very quickly. Like that, just like that woman came out and she's like, okay, here's a scenario. And like, you can't even follow what she's saying. And you're supposed to go in the room and say these lines and do all this kind of stuff. And there's no props. Yeah, so it's that very unique very than real. any other type of audition, a commercial audition, you know, like they'll be like, great, take this iPhone phone and it's a gun and you're a cop and it's like what <laughs> and you don't know until you walk in it's like who sent me in for a cop role like that's not happening it um, happens all the time I remember going in for an audition where like literally she would the director was telling me what to do as I was on camera and I had to make all these things up on the spot she's like okay you're happy but now a bus just splashed you with water and now you're gonna cry and now you have to walk over to the side you see a cute guy but he's not t- like and I was like <laughs> I, before I had to process it in the moment so that's yes real. that's very real um, so the film is playing here at SIF. Uh, what are the plans after SIF for people who want to see it? Website, any information that they can check out? Yeah, so you know, hopefully from SIF and beyond, we're going to get distribution, and it'll be coming to a theater or computer or TV or iPhone near Something you. Near you. Um, but until then, you can follow at YMBJ Movie on Twitter, facebook.com slash YMBJ Movie for updates. Awesome. In terms of you guys, what else do you guys have coming up? What's next, so to speak, and where can yeah. people find out more information about you guys? Um, well, we are currently, we just finished our second feature film this oh, wow. month. We just finished writing it. Yeah, just yeah. flying right along. Popping them out. Yeah, we're popping them yeah. out. Just babies. <laughs> and then we are also uh, working, we're developing a television series about the two of us. So, oh, fantastic. Uh, similar to Billy and Barb, but more Sass and Jake. And we kind we of would play ourselves. ourselves. Interesting. Yeah. Um, and Twitter's for you guys? At JakeWill1L. And at Sass Goldie, and that's also our Instagram names as well. Sass Goldie and Jake Will. Goldie like Goldie Hawn. Got it. Nice or Goldilocks. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much, and I wish you the best of luck with thank the film. Thank you so much. Thank you Thanks so much. Love Seattle, by the way. The wrath of Khan can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. The board can't stop me. Because I've got space game and it feels alright.